Now we had a very close look at the whole middleware thing. Let's now understand how we can actually work with incoming requests and how we can extract data. And for that, I again want to be able to handle a post request. So let's say on add product here, I want to actually return an HTML page with a form. For that, I'll again return a form. And just as a side note, this of course is a bit of an incomplete HTML document. We should also wrap this in HTML and body and, and so on tags. I'm keeping this shorter here to make it easier to read, but later we will also write proper HTML code, no worries. So I have my form here and in there I'll have my input of type title uh, of type text here with a name of title, let's say. And I'll add a button again and that button will be of type submit because it should submit this form and send a post request therefore. And I'll simply give it a caption of add product. So let's simulate that this is a form that allows us to add a product to our own online shop or something like that. Now this is our form here and the form needs an action. So the path, the URL to which the request should be sent. And let's name this product and the method should be post, let's say, can also be written like this. So this will send a HTML code back, which holds a form. And now we need a route or a middleware that handles requests to product. So we can add app use slash product. Now the important part here is we can place that prior or after this middleware. They won't clash because they have nothing in common regarding the path. Uh, they have product in common, but slash add dash product is different to slash product. It just has to come before this one because otherwise this uh, would execute prior to that. So this position here looks all right. And then we again have our function which receives these three arguments. As a side note, you can of course omit an argument you're not planning to use, um, at least the third one. You can't omit the first one if you want uh, the response because the order does matter. But if you never uh, use the third one, you can omit it. But I always add it here to make it clear that it exists. So now with that, we have this function which will execute for product. And in there, I want to redirect. And for now, I want to lock the incoming data to the console. Now what we can do here is for redirecting, I can use response redirect, which certainly is easier than manually setting the status code and setting the location header. So redirect is another convenience function added by Express. And here I can redirect to let's say just slash. So it will automatically redirect me to the slash route. But of course, this is not the only thing. I'm also interested in getting the body of my incoming request. So extracting what the user sent me. And for this, Express.js now has a convenience feature for us. If I console log request body here, this is a new field added by Express and let's see what's in there. So if I now save this, we should be able to go back to slash add product and hopefully see an input field. And let's add a book here and hit add product. We're redirected to slash, this is working. And in the console, hmm, we see undefined. And let's get rid of the other console logs so that this is uh, less clouded with logs. We can also uh, remove that. So we see undefined. And the reason is that we're almost there. Request gives us this body convenience uh, property here. But by default, request doesn't try to parse the incoming request body. To do that, we need to register a parser. And we do that by adding another middleware and you typically do that before your route handling middlewares because the parsing of the body should be done no matter where your request ends up. And there I want to parse the incoming request body. Now for that we can install a third party package. And we do that by running npm install dash dash save because this will also be a package that is used in our, our code here that does matter for production. So just save, not save dev. And the name is body parser. Now this would actually be included in Express by default because the community wanted that again. It was in the past, then it was removed, then it was re-added. I will use that third party package, which is the recommended way of using it because if they ever decide to pull it out of Express again, this code I'm teaching you will still work. 
So now we install a new package, the body parser, and we can import that here. I'll store it in a body parser constant. The name as always is up to you. And the package is named body dash parser. And now we can use it here by calling body parser. So using that object and then dot URL encoded. This is a function you have to execute and you can pass options to configure it, but you don't have to here. And now what this does is it registers a middleware. So this function in the end just yields us such a middleware function. So this passes such a function here in the end, even though we can't see it. And this package will in the end in this middleware function call next in the end so that the request also reaches our middleware. But before it does that, it will do that whole request body parsing we had to do manually in the previous course sections. Now this will not parse all kinds of possible bodies, files, JSON and so on, but this will parse bodies like the one we're getting here, sent through a form. If we have other bodies like files, and we'll do that also in this course, we'll use different parsers. And this makes Express.js so extensible. If we need something, we can just plug it in. You see how easy that is. It's one line of code. Well, two if you count the import in. Now with that, we should actually get an output for this console log statement. So now let's restart the server. By the way, if you install a new package, you need to restart. You can't rely on the auto restart from Nodemon. And we should configure one thing as I'm getting warned here. You should pass the config options here and set extended to false. This is if it should be able to parse uh, non-default um, features, you could say. So let's uh, add this to comply with what we should use here. And with that, we get the body parser enabled. Now let's try this again and let's go back to add product and let's add our book again. Add product, we're redirected. And now we see this is what we get a JavaScript object with a key value pair, which also makes extracting that value easier than we had to do before with the split function where we manually had to create that array and so on. Now we get an object where we simply get the key we defined in our input here, so this name, and then the value the user entered. And this is definitely simpler than our custom approach we used before. And now we can work with all the data our users yield us, store them in a the database, something we'll do later, show them in the response, whatever we need to do. Now, one thing of course is missing. This right now would also execute for an incoming GET request. Well, we only want to listen to a POST request. So what can we do regarding that? We're able to parse incoming request bodies with the help of the body parser package, which is pretty neat. But right now, as I mentioned, this middleware always executes, not just for post requests, but also for get requests. What can we do regarding that? Well, instead of app use, we can also use app get. This is basically app use. It has the same syntax as app use. We can use a path or don't use a path, but it only will fire for incoming GET requests. So this is another form of filtering. Besides filtering for the path, app GET allows us to filter for GET requests. And on the same page, we also got app POST to filter for incoming POST requests. And just by changing this word, this middleware will now only trigger for incoming POST requests with this path and not for GET requests. So if I save this, and I go to slash product. You see, I get hello from Express, so I don't end up here, even though I entered slash product, but it was a get request. But if I send a post request through that form I have on add product, if I do this here, book two, you see, we get this output, so we clearly made it into this middleware due to our filtering. So this is another way of using that middleware function instead of use, which will work with all HTTP methods. We can also use get or post to filter for these. And additionally, you also have delete, patch and put, which are other HTTP verbs, which we'll use later in the course because we can't really use them from a normal HTML document.
We're nearing the end of this module because we already learned a lot about the core concepts of Express.js and this therefore is a crucial module because all the rest of the course will basically build up on this and this knowledge of how Express.js works. Now even though our dummy app here is really simple thus far, we're already putting all our code into the single app.js file which is therefore getting bigger. Now obviously for an app of this size, it's not a problem at all, it's still pretty small. But typically we want to split our routing code over multiple files. We want to basically export our logic in different files and import it into this file. We could do this, we could create files where we export these functions. But Express.js actually gives us a pretty nice way of outsourcing routing into our files. And for this, I'll change our folder structure a bit. I'll add a new folder, which I'll name routes. Now you don't have to name this, you could name it differently too, but it's a convention you often see that you put your routing related code, so your code that should execute four different paths and HTTP methods, that you put that into files which you store in the routes folder. And there, since we're building or we're slowly building towards an online shop here, I'll add a route which I'll name admin.js because this should be the route that handles the creation of products which the admin of the shop can do. I'll also add another file and that will be shop.js. So basically what the users see, let's say. Now we'll not build the full shop here. We'll slowly develop it over the next lectures and modules because it uses a lot of cool features like databases and so on. But we can at least start putting our code into these files here. The add product route and this product post request should certainly go into our admin JS file because these are routes that are reached uh, by the admin. And the general route here should go into our shop JS file so that users that are visiting our front page see this route. Now one convenient feature offered by Express.js to achieve this is to go into these files and import Express again you can and you typically do import this into multiple files. And then we can use a feature of it called the router. Now you can also uh, create this with a lowercase r at the beginning, the name is totally up to you. And I do create the router by calling express.router and this is a function I execute. This router is like a mini express app tied to the other express app or pluggable into the other express app I'll say which we can export here. So here I can use module exports and set it equal to the router. Now, of course, this doesn't do much. We have to use that router to now register things. And actually I'll name this here with a lowercase r uh, to be in line with my other names. Uh, this, however, has to have a capital case r. So now the router here can be used to again, define a use function for all requests, a get function for get, post for post and so on. So basically we can go back to the app.js file, cut these two admin routes from there, put them in here in the admin.js file and simply replace app with router here. Now the router gets exported. So the router now has these two routes registered because we exported here and this is the object on which we register these routes. The other code can stay as it is because the router functions here basically work in exactly the same way as the app use function does or the app get and so on function does. I'll rename this to get though because I only want to handle get requests to add product and return this form. And with that, with this exported here, we can now import that into the app.js file. Now for this, I'll add an import at the top, separated from Express to make it sure or to make clear that this is my own uh, file. And I'll name it admin routes. The name is totally up to you, but I do require a relative path to the routes folder and then in there, the admin file. And you can omit the .js as I already explained. This will be added automatically. So now this is importing this router object here and this router object in turn has these routes registered. And the nice thing is about this router that it is actually a valid middleware function. So we can take admin routes and just call app use and put our admin routes in there just like this. Not calling it like a function, so without parentheses, but simply 
just the object itself, the router object we're exporting in this file. We can use this here. And now this will automatically consider our routes in the admin.js file when funneling the request through this middleware here. Now, just as before, the order matters. So if we put this after this middleware, we will never reach that. So this hasn't changed. Now we can do the same for our front facing route here. Let's go to the shop.js file. And there again, feel free to pause the video and try this on your own. Try to implement this with the express router as we just did in the admin.js file. Were you successful? Let's import express first of all by requiring express. Then let's create that router object by calling express.router as a function. Let's export the router here. And let's then use app use or paste in what I copied, but replace app with router and maybe use with get. You don't have to do that. The use method would exist too, but now we only handle get requests here. Now we can go back to admin.js uh, excuse me, to app.js and import our routes there too. The order of the imports doesn't uh, matter. So my shop routes, I require them from the routes folder and they are from the shop.js file. And now here, again, the order matters. We should register this second. Now, if I save this and I reload add routes, uh, add product, this works. Now, actually, here's one important thing to understand. Even if I would switch the position here and have shop routes first and I reload, it would work and we would not end up in this route. But this only happens because I have get here. Get, post and so on will actually do an exact match here. If I would use use here as I did before to handle any incoming HTTP method, then if I reload here, we see hello from express again. So this exact matching is not achieved by using the router, but because we use get here. And that would have been the same if we sticked to the app way of doing this in the app.js file we had previously. So get also makes sure that it's not just a get method, but this exact path. And therefore, now, if I enter some random stuff, I actually get an error because now I got no single middleware that would handle this. But I do have my route set up here now and split up and then registered here. And as I mentioned, it's not the worst practice to still care about the order here, even though at the moment it'll work fine no matter what the order is. But if you ever change something back to use, it would matter. And therefore, why don't we just care about it right from the start?